I've been traveling for six months, and this is all that I think that you need to travel for as long as you want. First, I wanna start off by saying that the actual gear, like the brand specific thing, doesn't really matter. We live in a day and age where it just takes like one second on Google to figure out what the best item is out there in that brand, whether it's backpacks, whether it's phones, anything. And so that puts it in our mind that we have to have the biggest and best of whatever we're buying. And if it's not the best, then it's not worth buying, which isn't true. Typically with most things, if it's not the best, you won't even notice the difference unless you're a master in that area. You're not gonna notice the difference. So with that said, all the equipment is gonna be linked below if you're interested in purchasing any of it. Um, click the links below. They are affiliate links, so if you buy from that link, it'll help support me. So do that. Let's start off with my backpack. I've been traveling with the F-Stop Satori bag, which is a fantastic backpack, but I do not recommend it. And the only reason I don't recommend it is because it is not a good backpack for the normal traveler. If you are a photographer or a videographer, you should get that backpack because it's amazing. But if you're not, don't get it. It's just too much of a backpack. The backpack that I would recommend is a backpack much smaller. Offspray makes a really great backpack or Tortuga Backpacks makes a really good backpack. But basically, I would recommend any backpack below 40 liters. Between the 30 and 40 liter mark is where you wanna stop. You don't wanna go any bigger than that because if you go bigger than that, you're gonna think you need more stuff just to fill up the backpack. So keep your backpack small, you'll keep the amount of stuff you take to a minimum. That being said, currently I travel with the Satori backpack and I have a smaller backpack for a day pack. So if you are someone that needs a lot of camera gear or a lot of extra gear besides the essentials to live, then I would recommend a bigger backpack. The Satori is like a 60 liter, which is massive. Number two, let's talk about shoes. I wear minimalist shoes, and I understand that most people don't wear minimalist shoes. If you don't, I would not recommend these shoes to you because they're just gonna be too much and your feet are gonna hurt. Right now, I currently wear the Limbs Primal shoes. I really, really, really like these shoes. The only thing I don't like is the way they look. They look kind of silly. They kind of look like spatulas on your feet, but they're really amazing. The reason I pick these shoes over like the Vivo Barefoots or other barefoot shoes is because these ones, not only are they really flexible so you can feel the ground, you use all the muscles in your feet and your ankles, but they also have a wide toe box which allows you to spread out your toes like you're designed to. And opposed to all the other ones, still keep your toes pushed together. So I like these a lot. I've had them for about six months, and as you can see, I'm needing a new pair, but I've really kind of beat them up. I've taken them on trails, rocks, everything. Depending on where you're traveling, if you're planning on hiking, I would also recommend a second pair of shoes. I travel with a minimalist boot. That way, whenever I'm hiking or trekking or whatever, I can wear these in their high tops and so they can keep dirt and stuff out of my shoes, but I still have the minimalist feel. These are the mini mills. They're really like the only barefoot shoe on the market. Limbs makes a barefoot boot, but I've never worn those. So maybe once I'm done with these, I'll try those. If I was to change, add anything, I would add a pair of sandals, not just like flip flops or anything. I would do like some barefoot sandals. Earth Runners makes a really great sandal that I would like to get. I just haven't got them yet. What I would recommend is one pair of shoes and one pair of sandals unless you're gonna do some like extreme trekking and hiking, and then I would recommend a pair of boots. Pants, one pair of long pants, one pair of shorts, one pair of swim trunks. Long pants, you can wear them literally like a week before they start to smell or look dirty. And that might sound gross to you, but like it's way better than carrying like five pairs of jeans and changing them every day, which is unnecessary because they don't actually get very dirty and you can't tell and they don't smell. These long pants that I have, these uh, jeans, they're Prana jeans and they are literally the most comfortable jeans I've ever worn in my life. I've only had them for like two months, so I am a little concerned about the durability. I don't know how like strong they are because they, they just don't feel as like hefty as I would like them to, but they are definitely the most comfortable pair of pants I've ever worn. And time will tell how durable they are. They're doing fine as of two months, but I would like a pant, pair of pants to last me at least a year because those ones are kind of pricey. Then the shorts that I have, they're just regular shorts, nothing special about them. I bought them in Paraguay just at like some regular retail store, just something comfortable. Whenever it comes to clothes, everybody recommends that you don't wear cotton, blah, 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 blah. There is really good reason for that. Cotton is 
probably like, I mean, it's really comfortable, but it's the worst as far as like travel, but it's also the cheapest. So unless you have like multiple hundreds of dollars to buy clothing specific for travel, then you just travel with what you got. And really it, it's not that big of a deal. I, I've been wearing cotton pants, cotton shirts for the past six months and I've been fine. You just have to do laundry a little bit sooner. If you're in like really cold climates, I would not recommend cotton, but for the daily use, it's perfectly fine. I travel with quite a few shirts, honestly. I would like to break it down to just like two shirts, which I would uh, then need to get something other than cotton. But right now I travel with eight shirts. I travel with three black v-necks, two gray v-necks, two white v-necks, and one purple v-neck. And that's like all the shirts that I travel with. And that gives me like a week, week and a half worth of shirts before I need to do laundry. By the time you need to wash all your shirts, your pants will be ready to wash. Then you wash them all at one go. And then bam, you've got clothes for another week, week and a half. But like I said, all the shirts I have, they're just regular cotton shirts, nothing fancy about them. I mean, I don't know. I got all of them for probably less than like 30 bucks. Underwear. These I do recommend just spending the money on because they're amazing. I wear the ex officio boxers and they are incredible. I travel with two of them and then I travel with a third pair of just like regular Under Armour boxers for backup just in case I run out. But these boxers, they're amazing. They're lightweight, they're super comfortable and you, I travel with two and I wash them in the sink and after you're done washing them, if you roll them up in a towel, step on the towel to squeeze all the water out of them, they'll dry overnight for sure. And then by the morning, you've got a clean pair of boxers. And so you really only need two. I travel with three just because they're light and they don't take up any space, but you really only need two. And I've been traveling like that for six months, been fine. When I take one off, I wash it, put on a clean pair, those dry by the time the pair I'm wearing are dirty, take them off, wash them in the sink, rinse and repeat, literally. As far as females go, no idea what you should get, sorry. Ex officio makes female underwear as well, and so I would assume that it's good just because these are so great, but I honestly don't know. I also travel with two tank tops, sleeveless shirts, whatever you want to call them, vests. And I travel with two just because they're so light, it doesn't really matter. And then if one's dirty, wash it. I can wear the other one, it gives me a little bit of variety. And yeah, they're comfortable for really hot days. Socks. I would recommend spending money and getting on better socks, but right now the socks I have, they're just like some regular Nike short top socks. Nothing special, I've got like four pairs. Then I've got one pair of long socks for whenever I'm hiking for in my boots. And then I have one pair of wool socks, which I don't use right now because I'm in a warmer climate, but whenever I was down in South America and it was cold, I wore those quite a bit. So if you're gonna be in a colder climate, I recommend getting a nice pair of wool socks. If you're not, don't worry about it. If you're going to just warmer climate, you might not even need to bring socks. You might just wear sandals the whole time. And if that's the case, don't bring socks. But if you need socks, just get regular socks, get athletic socks. The thinner, the better, because they dry faster. Like I said, right now I've just got regular socks and they've been working fine for me. A hat. A hat is really important, really just any kind of hat to keep the sun out of your eyes. As you can see, my hat's been used quite a bit. Belt. Belts are important, don't travel without a belt. You never know whenever your pants are gonna loosen up, stretch out and get too saggy. Travel with a belt. This belt I actually really, really like. I got it, it was like 18 bucks. I kinda spent the money on it, but I really like this belt. It's really strong, really sturdy. I'll link that below. The jacket I travel with, I really recommend. I recommend traveling with this jacket no matter what climate you're gonna go to because you never know, sometimes it'll get cold at night, but this is the Patagonia Nano Puff, really great jacket. If you're going to really cold climates, I would just recommend getting some sort of base layer, heavy base layer and that, and you'll be, you'll be all set. That'll keep you nice and warm. But that one's great, packs down super small, super light. You hardly even notice it's in your backpack. So I'll just recommend no matter what climate you're going to, to bring it because if it gets cold, you can just toss it on, no problem, nice and warm. I also travel with a Columbia rain jacket. The Columbia one's actually just like the cheapest on the market that does the job and it does the job fine. I've never worn it and gotten wet. But if you really want like a really great jacket, there's they range from like 100 to like $500, but that one's the cheapest and it works. I also travel with waterproof pants, which I don't recommend you get unless you're going to someplace that's like super rainy. I've only worn those like three times in the past six months. One of those times 
was on a mountain. Yeah, the rain jacket is typically sufficient. And if not, if you carry an umbrella, you'll be fine, no problems. Toiletries. If you're a guy, this is literally all you need. If you're a female, I don't know what all you need, but if you're a male, literally this is all you need. A toothbrush, tooth powder, which I rec recommend everybody use tooth powder because you don't, like, it's just so much, like, ugh. I started using tooth powder six months ago and I'm never going back to paste. It's like, it's a small thing. One container lasts me about five months and it's like four bucks. You don't have to worry about planes or anything. It doesn't spill all in your luggage and get gooey. Yeah, it's just amazing. Really highly recommend tooth powder. And I just recently started using this soap. It's a Dr. Bronner's 18 in one soap. I use it to clean me and my hair and it works fine. So literally those are the three things I travel for toiletries, a toothbrush, tooth powder, and that soap, seriously, all you need. And you also need a towel. And a towel is where I would recommend spending the money to get a good towel. The towel I use is the Eco Department towel. It's like a microfiber, microfiber towel, and it dries super fast, super light, super compact. It works great. Just make sure whenever you get it to machine wash it two or three times before you use it. I made the mistake of not, and it was like, very uncomfortable on the skin, but once you've washed it a few times, it's fine, it feels fine, it's super soft, um, and it dries really, really quickly, and you've got a towel always with you. And that's really important because in hostels, if you don't have a towel, they're gonna charge you a couple bucks, and so after a while, that's really gonna start to add up, and then you're, like, you're better off just spending money and getting your own towel, and this one actually comes with a small, hand towel, which I don't travel with, but I know a lot of people that do, and if you like a smaller washcloth, then it's great, it comes with it. Also, I travel with my iPhone and a charger. I'm using the iPhone 6S, and I hate the phone. Like, honestly, I really hate it. I don't know what Apple did, but they messed this phone up. Camera's really good in it, I like that, but like, this phone, it shuts off in cold weather, it just shuts off random. I just hate the phone so much. I do not recommend the iPhone 6S, but, I do recommend a good smartphone of whatever you like. If you're traveling with a really good smartphone, you might not even need to bring a camera because they, some of the cameras on some of the smartphones are very, very good, and for the average user, you don't need anything more. If you do want something more and you wanna spend less than $500, I would recommend getting the Canon G9X, probably the best on the market for the price for below $500, and if you buy it used, you can get it really cheap. If you wanna spend over 500, but under 1,000, I would recommend getting either the Sony RX100 Mark III or Mark IV. If you buy both of those used, the Mark III is like 600 bucks, the Mark IV is like 700 bucks. Those are both really, really amazing cameras. If you got the money, I recommend it. They take amazing photos, amazing video, really great cameras for the price. And if you wanna spend more than 1,000, there are a plethora of options of cameras out there, but really for the average person, the smartphone will work and then you don't need to travel with a camera. But bring a charger, and if you're gonna travel with only a phone, I recommend bringing some sort of battery bank to recharge your phone throughout the day if you're gonna be using it all the time. Especially if you're gonna be out and about, it's just really, really convenient to have something with you to charge it, then you've got all your maps and blah, 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 blah. You don't have to worry about it dying. A universal charger is very, very important. And if you've got a lot of electronics to charge, bring a power strip as well, but most people don't need that. The wallet I use, I used to have a bifold wallet that had like a middle flap in it, and I cut out the middle flap, and that's my wallet. Super small, super compact. Always keep your wallet and phone and anything important in your front pockets. You're way less likely to get pickpocketed if it's in your front pocket opposed to back pockets. But that's pretty much it for my list. Uh, obviously, I travel with more stuff because I have to make YouTube videos and I do photography and video work for a living, so I have to travel with tripods, cameras, a drone, uh, more stuff, and I also do camping and mountaineering and stuff like that, so I've got equipment for that as well. But for the average traveler, this is really all you need, whether you're going for a week or three months, like this would be all that you needed. If I wasn't doing those other extra, extracurricular activities and I wasn't making videos and taking photos for a living, then this would be all that I traveled with. And I would put it all in a small 30 liter backpack and hit the road. Like that's, you really don't need that much to travel. The barrier to entry for travel is very, very low. Like really, you can just kind of take whatever you have now and start traveling. I mentioned like some gear that I think is really important and it's worth spending the money on, but really, 
it doesn't matter whether you've got the best or the worst gear. Like if you want to travel, you'll make it work while you're on the road. If you spend more money, you might make it a little bit more comfortable, but then you've just got to think of diminishing returns. Is the extra amount of comfort worth the extra amount of money? And sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. If you like this video, leave a like, leave a comment if you think I missed anything, what you like to travel with, if there's like something that you really, really think that is the most important thing to travel with that I missed, leave a comment. Let me know if you wanna see more videos like this, but until next time, I'll catch you guys on the flippity flop. Stay rad.